you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, I tell you what, this crisis has really gotten the socialist to show their hand. That may be the only really good thing that has come out of this whole pandemic. And I do want to go ahead and show you, I think this really does show who they are and where their mindset is. So we'll go ahead and play this clip from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Talk about this idea of reopening society. You know, only in America does the president, when the president tweets about liberation, does he mean go back to work? When we, you know, have right. this discussion about going, going back or reopening, I think a lot of people should just say, no, we're not going back to that. We're not going back to working 70 hour weeks just so that we could put food on the table and not even feel any sort of semblance of security in our lives. First of all, before I even get into how wrong this is, you should also know that the whole thing is based on a false premise because AOC tries to peddle this narrative out over and over again. She, she tries to make people think that there are just hordes and hordes of workers that are being horribly exploited, that are working 70, 80 hours a week and still don't have enough money, like she said, to even put food on the table. First of all, that's a virtual impossibility. Just about anybody that is working 70 hours a week and still not making ends meet, that's either a person that is living in a blue state that is taxed to death, and, you know, half of their income is just going straight to the government, or that's something somebody that is spending all their money on things they shouldn't, whether they're involved in some kind of drug addiction or something like that. It's virtually impossible to work that much and still be struggling financially. And the second half of that is, it's just not that common, regardless of whether you're struggling financially or doing really well. Do you know what the average work week is for the average American? If you look at it, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average work week is only 34.4 hours. So it's really, even looking at, at the, of course, the 40-hour the limit, you're not even really getting all that close to that one. If you're looking at the average American and what their work week looks like. And by the way, I think this is really hilarious because when I was looking the stat up to research for this, I found it really interesting that, do you know when they break down the average work week by demographic, do you know what demographic actually is the only one that works more than 40 hours a week? Only one. Men. Men are the only ones that are working more than 40 hours a week. They, they work about 41 hours a week, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And so it's hilarious that AOC, that I'm sure would talk about how exploited women are and how terrible it is and how they're only making 70 cents on the dollar, the only demographic that was actually working on average more than the 40-hour federal legal limit was men. So don't come here and talk to me about male privilege and how they're making so much more money than women when we're actually working a significant larger amount of our time than women are. And also that we're actually just working more. I don't see how that would factor into her male privilege worldview. And by the way, another interesting factoid there, married men specifically, they tend to work about four hours a week more than their unmarried counterparts. And so the, uh, the average married man, which I'm sure she would just sort of dismiss as a symbol of the patriarchy and all of that stuff, the, the very demographic that she is normally attacking and talking about being so privileged, actually it turns out that those are the ones that are working and being exploited more than the others according to her own ridiculous liberal logic. And the second part of this is that AOC just does not understand, A, Americanism, but she also doesn't understand liberty. She's just like, uh, I just think it's like so ridiculous that uh, when the president is talking about liberty, he's talking about going back to work. Yeah, you idiot. That's what liberty means. 
the freedom to go out and make gain for yourself. That's what it means to be a self-made person. In America, that used to be something that was upheld as a virtue. Somebody that goes out and makes gain and provides for their family and works really hard and, and brings home money in return for that hard work. That's what freedom looks like. The American dream for the longest time was going out, having a good job, having a couple of kids, having a strong family, being able to go to whatever church you wanted to on Sunday and, and having a nice house, all of those things provided because you had a good job and you were good at it. Now what has happened is we have so skewed what that originally meant is that we're saying you should have all that stuff, but you shouldn't have to work for it. All the reward, none of the responsibility. And that's the difference in worldview here. You see, the difference in a conservative and a social justice warrior like AOC is that a conservative traditional American, they see work as something that is empowering and liberating. They see going to work as something to where they get to, to do something that, you know, more or less we love usually. Uh, of course, I've had jobs that I didn't like too, but even then I had the ability to go out and make money and to do what I wanted to with that money. And so it was still empowering, even if I didn't really like the job all that much. But the average person gets to work at a job that they more or less like, and they get to go out and make their own money and be independent. That's the idea that this entire country was founded on, that we are independent, that we don't depend on other people. AOC's version of liberty is the exact opposite of that. People that are dependent on the government. People that the government provides for without them actually doing anything to receive that dependency in return. And so the government basically just manages your life from a centralized location in Washington, D.C., and instead of being independent, you are dependent upon them. See, her idea of liberty is the exact opposite. Her idea of liberty is much more akin to the idea of liberty found in the USSR. Something that the government basically provides you with everything that you need and that you are essentially merely a tool, a small cog in the larger grand machine of government. That's the opposite of American liberty. The American idea of liberty is that you do it on your own. You provide for yourself and provide for others along the way and help them get to a point where they can provide for themselves and also in turn help others along the way. That's what Americanism is. That's what liberty is. And AOC just does not get that because in her mind, liberty is freedom from responsibility. What America has always understood freedom to be is freedom to be responsible, to have responsibility, and to go forth and do good with the things that you've gained as a result of your work. And the great thing about AOC and the reason that I have a lot of conservative friends that talk about they just want to get rid of her, they think that she should be out of office, I completely disagree with that. I love AOC. I'm so glad that she is a member of the House of Representatives, and we were going to get a liberal in that seat anyway. I hope she stays there for the entirety of her long political career. I, I would be fine with AOC from the time that she's 30 now to the time that she's 80 being a constant member of Congress to constantly remind us of how awful socialism is. I, I love AOC being in the House. And the reason that I say that is AOC constantly confirms every dumb liberal idea that conservatives have been making the case that they had for a long, long time. How many years have you heard Republicans and conservatives making the case that, no, these people really are socialists and what they want to do is create more voters that are dependent upon the government that don't go out, that don't work for themselves. They want to create an entire class of people that are wholly dependent upon the government. Thus, they will vote for Democrats. That's what AOC just said, that she would rather people actually be dependent upon the government than she would them go out and work. AOC confirms basically every conservative argument we've been making for the past 30 years. And that's why she is, I think, more instrumental to the good of this country and the good of the Republican Party than any Republican has been in my lifetime. And I, I'm including, I wasn't alive for Ronald Reagan, but definitely H.W. Bush and Newt Gingrich, all those guys. I think she's been better for the Republican Party than any of them. And by the way, she's not alone. Her uh, fellow squad mate, Rashida Tlaib, 
basically joined in with a very similar message the other day. If you are afraid to go to work, do not go to work. And I know this is hard, but you have no right, you have every right to make sure your life is put first and to fight back. I don't care if it's labor organizing this late in the game or if it's demanding that your life is not treated as if it's disposable, but I want you not to be afraid to go to work. You should not uh, at all ever feel like, uh, I don't care if it's a president, I don't care who it is that tells you we need to, to, you to go back and we need you to start up back the economy and everything. Your life is much more important. And so I always tell my residents when they call, they're like, Rashida, you know, they're making us do this, they're making us do that. I said, do you feel safe? If you don't feel safe, you don't have to go to work. All right. So Rashida Tlaib basically saying the same thing as AOC. The motivation is a little different. The tone is a little different, but the overall message is exactly the same. That really you just shouldn't go back to work. That when all this is, regardless of what your government says, regardless of what your employer says, when, when they say go back to work, you should just say, no, I'm not going to go back to work if I don't feel safe. Unfortunately, there are also two gigantic lies that this was also based on. First is that you should be able to keep other people from going back. Look, if one person doesn't feel safe and they decide not to go back to work, that's okay. I think that that's, I've made it abundantly clear since we started this segment, I think that that's all right. What Rashida Tlaib was suggesting is that if you don't feel safe, you should also convince other people around you that they're not safe either and keep them from going back and organize some kind of labor strike. No, that's not what's going on. And by the way, that would be a really dumb thing to do right now. So coming together and, and doing that, that's just not a smart move, especially when there's so many people looking for work right now. This is one of the big differences, again, in the liberal mindset and the conservative mindset. The liberal mindset would say, okay, if I don't want to do something or I don't feel safe, I should make sure that nobody else does either. I should make sure that, that nobody has the ability to do it. It's the same thing with gun control, isn't it? A liberal that doesn't like guns, what they do is they try to make it to where nobody else can get a gun. When a conservative doesn't like guns, he just doesn't buy a gun. That's the end of that discussion. That's the end of that thought process with him. And the same thing would be true of this. If I feel unsafe going back to work, I just don't go back to work. It's as simple as that. I don't feel like I'm being exploited or anything. But when it comes to this, Rashida Tlaib wants to, if you don't feel safe, she thinks that nobody should go back to work. That's ridiculous. And another thing that, the second big lie that she gives here is that employers are exploiting and treating people as though they're disposable. She says, well, you shouldn't be treated like your life is disposable. Somebody that is suggesting that they need you at work is not treating you like you're disposable. In fact, they're doing the exact opposite. If they felt like you were disposable, they wouldn't ask you to come back to work. That's not how it works. They feel as though you are essential to accomplishing this job, which is the reason that they want you to come back, the reason that they are asking you to come back. Again, when you're talking about liberty, when you have the freedom to choose to say, okay, I'll come back or no, I won't, then you're not being exploited. Then it is a voluntary exchange of goods for services. Goods being the paycheck, services being whatever you do at your work. But the idea that employers are somehow, somehow evil and heartless, the reason that they may be getting back to work is so that that person does have a job. Because maybe that business just goes belly up if they don't get somebody back to work in the next few days and, and they're looking at the numbers and saying, man, if I, I don't put this together, my employees are not going to be able to do this. The thing is, they're probably okay. The business owner probably has enough financial reserve, not all of them, but most of them are probably going to be okay financially, even if this shutdown lasts a little longer. You know who's not going to be? The workers. Those people are the ones that those employers are probably looking at and saying, if, if I don't do something to save this business, they're not going to have a job. And then they really will be in trouble. And so the idea that Rashida Tlaib can just sort of, with a blanket statement, say, that you should just not go back to work, that's a really dumb idea. It's short-sighted, and it also assumes some sort of malicious intent that employers are these evil, heartless, malicious people that just want to get people back to work so they can sit on their giant piles of gold in their basement because they want other people to die. That's just ridiculous. But ultimately, what this all boils down to 
This entire situation is a socialist dream. It is a socialist dream where nobody is working and everybody is dependent upon the government for everything that they get. I mean, food, health care, everything. This is a dream come true for the socialist. And what's hilarious about this is, even though it's unsustainable and we wouldn't be able to stay the way that we are now for very long under socialism, ultimately this is the way that they want it to be all the time. That should be pretty telling that what a socialist envisions as a utopia is the world that we're currently living in where we're all griping about being dependent on the government and not being able to work. But that really is ultimately what they want. An entire people that people are just cogs in a machine under the watchful eye of Washington, D.C., as opposed to individuals going out and making gain and building something on their own. That's what Rashida Tlaib and AOC would rather America be. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances. <laughs>